Hello and welcome back to the Cancelled Podcast. It's me, Brooke. Hey, Brooke. <laughs> I, there's something so like special about when we do an episode super chill like this, when like the past few episodes were like hectic, you know? Yeah, and hectic they were. We had Trisha on and it's like Trisha was here and she kept saying like, oh my God, it's so sweet how everyone comes and watches. I'm like, no, she everyone's here for you. love how you have an audience. Like, no, they are fully here for you. Uh, like literally when I heard, I did that when, on the last Trisha episode, I showed up just to do it. Uh-huh. Because it's just, she's an icon living. Like I get it. Everyone's obsessed with her for full. So many reasons. Valid reasons. I meant to watch her video today. I know she did a streamies recap. <gasps> like she reviewed the streamies? Yeah. And you're in the thumbnail. So I know she talked about you. I, oh, I'm watching You it. haven't seen it? We should watch it right after this. Oh, we should have watched it before so that we could have talked about if it. If she has no fans, I am dead. Like, for real, if she has no fans, I'm dead. Should we jump into Streamy's action? I think we should. <laughs> I think we should. I don't know what it is, but nothing frustrates me more when people think I'm drunk when I'm sober because of the amount of sincere, like, effort it takes for me to be sober. Like, I'm thinking about it every yeah, second like of every day. Yeah, and you're going to accuse me of being drunk when I'm putting in all this work. However, I will say... It if was I, getting drunk. Yeah, if I watched that and I didn't know me, I would be like, that bitch is drunk as fuck. But I wasn't. I'm sober. I'm on 75 hard. Today is day 12 hour, 10 minute, 5, 37, 38, 39 seconds. I'm not counting. <laughs> I guess I should just defend myself real quick. Explain how it happened. Brooke and I went to the streamies. And we always have so much fun at the streamies. Like every year, it's just like a cute, fun, I love it. amazing time. And it's kind of become our thing now to go. I feel like we'll always go together. We go, slay, we promote canceled. We slay the carpet. We have so much fun. We get so much tea. We always find a new one or two new potential boyfriend prospects at the streamies. I know. There was a hottie at our table. I'll get to that. Oh, yeah, there was. a. He wasn't my type of hottie, but he was your type of hottie. He wasn't. He I never mind. What? One of my friends used to talk to him. Really? Yeah, and he has like a really specific job. So I like, yeah, as soon as he, he like told him? me what his job was, I was like, there cannot be more than one hot guy who does that. He's like an animal something, right? Animal. Yeah, he's like a snake whisperer. <laughs> I'm like, you know who else is a snake whisperer? My friend Tana Mojo. What does that mean? <laughs> Was it sexual or was yeah, it that it was everyone's like, a snake? It was sexual. God, wow. she's so My mind, dull. Yeah, so dull and fucking sober. Um, so this year, the streamies asked me to present. And they've asked me in the past to present, and I've always said no. Any award show for that matter, I've always said no. It's so strange that you like feel weird about that because you're so good in front of like an audience. I've always said that I feel like worlds more comfortable in an audience of like your on, fans yeah like my fans on tour or even just like someone else's fans if i were to open for someone else whatever people who like you know what i mean they're they're a just community. chilling they're happy to be there but like in front of all your peers and like oh. colleagues and like also just the whole industry managers brands like every like the ceos of everything are also there it stresses me out so much more as is like the streamy stage has always stressed me out because it's just like, oh, my God. And there's so many people in the audience that it's like, I know or I've been friends with or I'm still friends with or I've hooked up with or so on and so forth. So it it just adds so many levels of stress. The same with acting. I've always turned down every acting job pretty much because that makes me literally sick. I'm horrible at reading a script that's written for me that I feel is not me like you would like, normally say like that if it is not something that I would say and even if it is something I would you say for some it. reason like I, I just can't I can't sell it like I've never been able to I like freeze up I become so awkward whatever and so I reluctantly agree to presenting and I'm like I'm gonna try something new I'm gonna get out of my comfort zone I'm just gonna give it a whirl it's the streamies I, I'm familiar with the environment there this I'm gonna try it right it was my first time presenting at the streamies. It was also my last time presenting at the streamies. Maybe not. So a couple nights before, they email me over the script for me to present. And they tell me you're going to be presenting the food category with Brianna Chicken Fry. Perfect fit. I eat food. I yeah, know Brianna Chicken Fry. I also feel way more comfortable doing it with someone that I know and that I've like, she's, Brianna's seen me at some low levels. She's seen me blacked out. She's seen like, and I feel like we have a similar sense of humor that like we both hate awkward shit like that and could like riff off of each other, right? Mm -hmm. And then we get all ready for the streamies and a couple hours before I find out now that I'm going to be presenting gaming. Even better fit for you. 
if you ask me. Who the fuck decided Tana Mojo should present gaming? Somebody who, like, I feel like it was like putting Josh Peck in Oppenheimer. It was like, this will be funny. <laughs> stop <laughs> bringing it up. <laughs> I will never stop bringing it up. It is amazing. We're going to be 80 and she's going to be in her little walker <laughs> talking about Josh Peck and Oppenheimer Bible. No, but I like get just the, like a funny, like we'll toss this in here for like a good like switch up. I get that. Like it is, there's something polarizing about like me presenting gaming. Like they thought it would be funny, you know? I find out I'm presenting it with someone named Chris Collins. She's an angel. We'll get into that in a second. Um, But I don't know her. She's very brand safe for the most part. Like it's just... The vibes are now immensely different. Yeah, it's just, yeah. And so then I don't really get to see the script. And then from what they had sent prior, they changed it or something. I don't know. Like it's, it's new to me, essentially. So I get to like skim over at one time backstage for like two seconds. And then they just throw me out there and they don't really tell me anything. You know, there's a lady being like, okay, the lights are going to go off. And then you guys open it and say, and the winner is, but like, I also am the type of person who needs very clear instructions. Like you're going to stand up there for one minute and then you're going to exit after this happens, like so on and so forth. Yeah. You know? I was just kind of thrown to presenting. And I mean, clearly I am dumber than the rest of the creators because they all just figured it out. You know, they didn't. Maybe they had some rehearsal. Well, there's like a pretty standard practice. Like if you've ever seen an award show, you like, you know, you hand them an award, you step back, you watch them receive the award, and then everybody walks off together. I didn't know about the whole watch. I can't imagine thing. you pay much attention to award I shows. I do, but not enough to like internalize knowing that you wait. Yeah, and you that walk. It is a very specific. We walk out there, and I'm just, tr I, I'm nervous for all of the reasons that I just expressed. So nervous, and I'm sober, so I'm raw dogging the nervousness. Like two shots would have helped me, mm -hmm. honest to God. And I'm reading the script. I immediately swear. The only thing you can, you could literally have sex on an award show Yeah, stage. but this isn't like the People's Choice Awards. This is a streamies. It's, it's being streamed. That's fair, but it is like backed by huge sponsors like YouTube. And like, you're, it's still this, you're not supposed to swear. Yeah. And I've always known that. And even in the times that I've won awards or accepted awards for other people at the streamies, I still was mindful enough to be like, don't swear. Crazy is it's not like you just like are dropping F bombs all the time. Like it was like you, you just I don't know why you did that. I think that when I'm nervous, that's the first thing that like comes out of my mouth. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and right you go, I swore. And then <laughs> <laughs> right before we walk on stage two, Chris, the girl I'm presenting with, she's like being like, You're gonna kill it, whatever, but she's like, We should just like make up our own version. Be like, I love gamers, like blah blah blah. And then that threw me off so hard <laughs> trying to play into that. So I just immediately swore whole nine. I mean, you can literally do anything on the stage. We were going to kiss like Madonna and Britney and then last minute we we're like, let's not do that. Like whatever. At, like you can do anything. You just can't swear. And of course I fucking swore. And so then that just throws off my whole vibe even more. So obviously you don't know who's going to win the award until you open the card. And then the winner of this gaming award is an amazing, talented streamer by the name of Dream. And he... <laughs> He makes me nervous. He just makes me really nervous. Why? I don't know why. Maybe you have a little crush on him. He's cute. He's really cute for sure. I fuck with the man in a helmet. There's something about the helmet of it all. And like I had talked to him a decent amount before, but I'd never met him. And I just like the idea of like talking, texting someone, you know, yeah, that also like seeing them in person makes you nervous and stuff. The first time you're like hugging them is like on a streamy stage to be like clipped for everyone forever. And <laughs> why like, was it? And I already knew what had like transpired. I didn't want to like loop him into that meme by like us hugging and then that's awkward and like the whole nine. The only solution in my head was just go. Get out of there. Just get. You've done enough. You swore. You read the script horribly. You said who wrote that. You did the whole damn thing, I liked Tana. Your, I liked your visual when you said <laughs> <laughs> Zero out of ten, I thought, job. I thought it was an incredible performance from you. I'm not going to lie. It's so on brand for me. And I can leave my own body and say the streamies needed a moment like that. Yeah, come on. Don't like, be boring. Maybe that's narcissistic of me to say, but <laughs> You're I... You're like, I made that show. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely didn't. Definitely not getting invited back. I love the streamies. I don't think presenting's for me. I think if I were to ever do something like that again, I just need to be more involved on in the writing process of the script so that I can deliver it, maybe rehearse it. 
maybe have the winner not be someone That's or fair. A have it be pre-recorded do you remember at the people's choice awards when adam sandler presented and he wasn't even really there yeah like that's a that's a slay down boots you know i was in the streamies commercial i did so good it's just it's not i don't know it's not my thing it's not my vibe and I just had to fucking go. And I really wouldn't have probably even talked about this on the podcast if the whole internet didn't think I was just blackout drunk. Well, what's so crazy is I didn't even know any of that shit happened. I come back off stage. I, wait, no, this is going to sound bad, but I'm not kidding. I was ready to piss myself. So they came and pulled Tana from the audience like a long time before she was supposed to present. So I was sitting there alone with like my random friends at this table Snake who whisper. I just met. <laughs> I just met these people. And so I'm waiting and waiting and waiting and like fucking like 30 minutes goes by and you still hadn't come out. So I was like, I'm going to pee myself. And I ask everyone around me if I go right now, will I miss Tana? And then they say like up next, like yada, 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 yada. And like none of that was Tana Mojo. So I was like, I'm safe. I run. I go as fast as I can. I'm squeezing as hard as I can. I pee so quickly. I don't even think I washed my hands. I get back. All I see is the back of your head. You're walk You're running off stage. Well, I get off stage and I come down to see you and you're like, you did so good. Well, so then I told the kid next to me, I'm like, there's no way I just missed that. And he's like, no, she was amazing. I'll send you the video. She'll never even know you missed it. And I was like, perfect. So then I was like, no, you slayed. That was amazing. And I just remember looking at you and being like, she did not see my performance because our friendship like had you Brooke I'm not even kidding you also <laughs> you being there I could I didn't even look at the crowd one time I looked at only the teleprompter a because I didn't know the fucking script but b because I was like I know if I make eye contact with Brooke <laughs> I will start dying laughing or like doing something, saying something embarrassing, which I ended up doing anyways. But I didn't look at the crowd one time in fear of seeing you. <laughs> so I thought you were there until we like talked. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, man. It was just very funny. I was like, she clearly didn't well, see this. Well, the people at you... my table, they were like, no, she did amazing. And I was like, really? Like, and, I, and he was like, no, seriously. And I was like, did she mess up? He's like, no. All night, people kept coming up to me at the after party being like, you did so good. It was so you. But I'm like, I, I in my head, I just I'm like, this is getting clipped on well, TikTok. everything on the internet right too now. it's like perceiving it when having not actually been there is always going to be so different i hate being perceived i do too and that's actually our job yeah isn't that kind of crazy i hate it my head's huge one thing <laughs> <laughs> brooke's been spiraling about her head size how the fuck can anyone tell how big my head is and you can't even see it I, like i could be six foot three and you guys wouldn't know about it you can't Maybe your tell legs how would be a little closer to me but yeah if you were six foot three. But you know, like. I'm imagining you six foot three. It's like, now. like, that's such a funny thing to say that, like, how your head is big. How do you know? We were just talking off camera and Aaron was like, Reddit said that I look hot. And Brooke was no, like, I know I don't, saw. Don't. So you relapsed. Don't. <laughs> don't. <laughs> no. Okay. Let it be known. I talk, <laughs> I talk about home off Reddit all the time. Okay. And for some reason, that has been an invitation for people to, like, they'll DM me and be like, keep your head up like don't just ignore what they're saying and I'm like what are they saying like that puts it in my head that like something crazy is happening on there so yesterday I folded okay and I went on there <laughs> I can't stop fucking wheezing and dude. there was like this whole elaborate thing about how like they can't believe what I've done to my jaw and my chin and it is just so out of order and, and my face is just getting so ugly and I've taken it too far but the joke is I was just telling Aaron before you got here the closer I get to my natural face, the worse people think I look. And like that's Same. the actual trend. And so people like it, I, it's been a long time since I've done anything. I've done Botox, but I haven't been getting filler like I usually do. I haven't gotten cheek filler in yeah. forever. I haven't Same. gotten any filler in a long time except for, I mean, under eyes. You can't tell that you, someone just does under eyes. Need it. And all of a sudden people are like, oh, her face is looking horrible. And I'm like, yeah, because that's what I actually looked like. <laughs> <laughs> I, my entire for you page yesterday was like seven of your tiktoks and I, I was like oh brooke <laughs> brooke's spiraling. having one of those moments because she's just out here I defending was. her chin defending her head size <laughs> defend every everything and i, I just was imagining Dude, i've you been and me. chinned up since birth and i i'm dead <laughs> you changed your tiktok bio <laughs> yeah because i realize what is it every now? single like the front cam doesn't do anyone any favors either because it's like the the perspective of it it's like yeah makes like the front of your face like so much longer out yeah. so yeah my head looks fucking massive but sorry i didn't know it was a fucking beauty competition on tiktok i'm trying to be funny talk your shit so i was just Bite really i was so mad but i'm like you guys the joke is you don't like what i 
actually look like not not the filler you guys don't like what i look like now that i'm not getting it oh when i because when i was filled to the gods everyone I was like you look to great say to this no sorry either but fill anyway it. oh now i'm mad because now like the the more i say if people know i saw reddit they'll yeah maybe i, I don't hate know. them it's fair but um, i love the i love the canceled viewers the real ones yeah i was gonna say um one thing that i noticed though with all the the streamies she's drunk whatever all of my like diehard fans are commenting like you can tell she's literally not drunk like like people knew that was like my nervous energy so that made yeah, me the feel better who that know you know and the people who don't want to know so bad this whole episode has been about growth and change preparing for growth and change as a business owner saves time and headaches later it's the calm before the holiday storm but you can prepare your e-commerce business for the holiday rush now just by using ShipStation. whether you're shipping from your house or a warehouse ShipStation can help increase your profitability ShipStation dashboard has made it easier than ever to manage your orders there's a free trial and quick setup and now is the time to try ShipStation if you've been on the fence. In my opinion, ShipStation rates are the lowest on the market. You can easily automate shipping tasks and manage orders in one simple dashboard. You can quickly and easily update crucial order information and reduce errors. Effortless integration everywhere you sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. Manage orders, print labels, compare rates, optimize every shipment, and automate delivery notifications. Simplify and automate your shipping no matter how big your business grows. ShipStation has enterprise solutions that reduce warehouse costs and improve profitability. ShipStation's robust automations and reporting make scaling easy. And as your business grows, you can save thousands on shipping costs. Industry-leading discounted rates from USPS, UPS, DHL, and Global Post. Get discounts up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates. Over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce businesses with ShipStation. And 98% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. Set your business up for holiday season success with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com and use code CANCELLED today and sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, code CANCELLED. Thank you, ShipStation, for sponsoring today's episode and making it easier than ever to run your business during the holiday season. All my topics are weirdly wholesome. Like I have a lot of wholesome topics that I want to get into today. I think one thing about like sobriety that will change the narrative of this podcast a lot is I'm going to start needing to talk about more thought provoking things. Cause like when I'm drunk, I do all this crazy shit and I have so many things to talk about for cancel. But when I'm sober, I become so hyper aware of everything. I start hooking up with people less. I've been actually celibate. I've been actually, actually celibate since I've been back. You know, from you can just say like th there's a difference between being. It's just like your 75 heart thing. I completely get what you're saying. I have not had sex in a normal person amount of time. Yeah, I am like, not You don't have celibate. to give it celibacy label. Yeah. Just Whoa. like you don't have to call your sobriety 75 heart. Whoa. Whoa. But I love it. No, you opened my eyes there. You're so right. OK, yeah, I've just. I start to think about things more. You know what I mean? I've been dating. I've been going on a lot of dates okay. as of late and I've been so innocent and virginal Yay. on all of them. That's I've been great. on three dates with one guy and we haven't done anything. Oh, that's great. We have a fourth date. Tonight, He's from Hinge. Like, yes, but we have a really no weird... No shade to Hinge. No, no I shade like to Hinge, Hinge, but normally when I talk to someone through Hinge, I will spend the next three weeks betting them out like a true crime fucking podcaster. Like mm -hmm. I'm going to ask them where they grew up, who their friends are, where they live at. Like I need to know everything about them because I've had some weird like murderous hinge experiences. Yeah. experiences. But this guy is actually one of my very best friends, high school crushes. Hilarious. Which is so random. And it, like not in this state, like they lived in a completely different state. He just ended up moving to L.A. So my friend was able to vouch like he's not a murderer. So it kind of expedited that process and made me a little more comfortable with him, which is kind of a slay. Wait, I'm excited about it. I had a hinge thing that you told me I had to talk about on the podcast. It relates to your like little synchronicity thing, I think. OK. Or maybe it doesn't. But very like crazy coincidence. OK. A few months back, I was like spiraling. <gasps> I love this story. And I went on a random like drive all around LA all day long. And okay. then I, I had a blanket in my trunk. So I was like, I'm going to go to the park. I went to the park by myself. Okay. Like 
by Lake Hollywood. I love Lake Hollywood. The like Lake Hollywood Park, you know, where you can see the Hollywood sign. Yeah. It's like the most beautiful park, whatever. I like laid my little blanket out and I was sitting at the park by myself and I this was like, a sweet story. Yeah. And there was a man there, sexy, sexy man there, okay, with yeah. his dog. And there's something about a park that gets he, me going. Yeah, he was alone. You're in a park. He was alone. He's at this park with his dog. He's like playing fetch. I'm like, I keep, I'm like looking at the dog, trying to get the dog to come to me so that its owner comes to me. And I was like, yeah. how do I talk to this guy? But then in my head, I'm like, this is how normal people meet in the wild. <laughs> like they go to a park by themselves and they Some see a hot guy. Shit. And then they're like, oh, your dog is so cute. And that's yeah. how you meet. Like that's how every movie, per- like, love story starts that's actually so, so I was true. like this is perfect and i was like texting in the group chat like what do i say like i don't know how to do it and i just got scared and i never said anything and i yeah. regretted it so bad because i was like i will never see that man again yeah lo and behold i get a like on hinge yesterday from that guy and i know because his first photo is him at that same park with the same fucking dog and that's like such a sign like people can choose so many photos like he chose that one you happen to come across it girl you're about to get that go fetch dick i know but i can't i can't text him and be like funny story yes but you i can want to yeah you have to i feel like that's creepy i actually saw you one time when, when i was at the park by myself he was also at the park by himself you could just word it way less like casey anthony like you could just word it way less murderous but you know like what, I mean? what a cool story like imagine us telling our kids that i fully agree another thing this is such a stupid thing this is one of those icks that's like that is not a real ick and you're so stupid okay but he has a name that i don't want to say every day god that's so hard i you really hate that i remember when i first started dating kevin you met kevin for the first time and you were like and i kevin hate wasn't your name really that bad but what if you met a guy and his name was like carlton <laughs> And that had, would make me think of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Yeah, and you had two choices, Carlton or Carl. But I feel like that's where I just get spunky with the nicknames, like call him C. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's I just totally it's something I could definitely overlook, but it was like, wow, didn't expect that. Can to you be tell me his name? And we believe it. I don't even remember it. it. It's like something weird. And I looked him up. I was like, no one else is going to have that name. So I looked him up on Instagram and I couldn't find him anywhere. Anatoly. Or is it a Natalie? I hope it's not a Natalie. Well, like, think about the word anatomy, the phonics of the word anatomy, like, replace that L. I know, but I can't. I already, have, I already, ha- I already have a Natalie, you know what I mean? <laughs> I think we have to leave that. I know. <laughs> like, you, you thought it wasn't going to be bad haunt until I told you. Yes. What was, what was Isabella? Isabella was talking to a guy. Oh, my God. <laughs> she was, his name was Equanimous. And she thought his name was Equanimous. <laughs> and she's hung out with him several times. I go, did you call him Equanimous? Do you know how that story came about, Isabella telling that story? because I was having a conversation with her. And I was talking to this guy. I shit you not. I was talking to this guy. This was years and years and years ago. But I was talking to this guy for like three months. And we were like FaceTiming every single day and whatever. And it was very much like I wasn't really telling my friends about it or whatever, you know? Uh-huh. Like I was just kind of, it'd be like, oh, I'd go to bed and we'd like FaceTime and whatever. Super hot. And I thought his name was Malachi. And I would call him <laughs> Malachi to his face every. He you probably thought me. you were getting spunky with the nickname. You, and you know me. Like, I'm such a, like, I say people's names when I talk to them. Like, I'm going to be like, hi, Aaron. Like, so I'd be like, hi, Malachi. You know? And one day Amari was like, who's this guy who keeps FaceTiming? And I was like, his, oh, his name's Malachi. He's from here, there, whatever. And Amari goes, Malachi. Tina, his name is Malachi. <laughs> this man's name was Malachi. Malachi. But here's the thing. Oh, I want to say his Instagram. His Instagram had like a little pun on his name and it made it seem like it was Chi. Oh, like did it rhyme? Like did he have it with something that rhymed with Malachi? Yes. And like, yeah. I'm done. I just, it that just shouldn't be a thing. Yeah, at that's all. pretty bad, honestly. What if like, I, Malachi. But I don't know if somebody called me like Brooke or something for like, Brooke is <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no other way to fuck up brooke i'm calling you brooke, brooke. <laughs> for the rest of my life i promise you brooke you can call me tana everyone calls me that though Christine i know from you know, selling sunset always calls me tana and we've met like a hundred times and she's like i love somebody, tana somebody like who's really close to us calls you tana and i'm like wait what i can't remember who it is i think it's like greg goodfried or something <laughs> <laughs> like somebody who like is way too close to call you that that's crazy um so yeah i've i've been dating i've been being yeah, wholesome. that's really fun i hope this works out do you think what does he do what is well the advice? streamies also took me on a date like i'm not the streamies but like an interaction happened oh, at the streamies. From the streamies I, we were trying to do a little double date action after the streamies Can i we talk about know that? 
We have to, I think. I think we're entering our little, can we say gamer phase? Sure, but then let's cut to the absolute next topic. We discussed on the last episode the winery drama and how that ended up being a way bigger scandal than I thought it would. And I just wore a brown wig all week, and I don't know if you saw this, but on TikTok, everyone thinks that I have a major, massive, highly paid, super intelligent PR team, and that I, I had debuted brown hair to like get out of a scandal. What an interesting take. Like, I guess like Kendall Jenner would do that. No, it is such a like Kardashian thing to do. And now like, if you see me like, with red hair tomorrow like just know I'm in a scandal like they like, just know like something's about to come out I'm just again I'm just like it blows my mind for people to think that I'm like that calculated like I am just swinging and hopefully hitting it's so crazy that people think like I, I think that a, a really common misconception like people who aren't in this space think that everybody like has PR like even like really huge people don't have PR unless they're like Noah Beck. But now with this whole new TikTok generation, like the, I guess yeah, that are all signing like, to like UTA and CA. Yeah, but that's like that's what I mean when I say Noah Beck. Yeah, but like Octopus Lover, Leo Skeppy, huge huge creators, and yeah, Leo doesn't have PR, and I don't think Jake does either. I don't think he needs it. He has Sophia Richie. That's actually so fair. I really was just like assuming. They but they did. are all signed to huge agencies, which is so crazy because I grew up thinking like UTA, CAA. WME were like like Miley Cyrus is with you know what I mean yeah like, it's so crazy to me that they like take influencers it makes perfect sense but yeah. it's crazy we'll never have that probably but to be I fair hope. every time I've ever been signed to an agency or had PR it doesn't do anything for me like people always ask me do you have a PR team or people are always talking about online like Tannehill just PR team <laughs> yeah there's only so much they can do exactly <laughs> you pay a PR team out of pocket so any celebrity or influencer who has a PR team is paying yeah, wait, that's kind of an interesting topic to talk about because I don't think people really understand yeah that. Like they're paying like the minimum is usually like seven to ten thousand dollars a month for them to be yeah. placed in articles, you know, taken to events, walking carpets, getting free dinners, getting free hotel stays and PR teams. Obviously, what they're most known for is kind of damage and scandal control on top of good press. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the number one thing with the PR team, a you're paying them. So if you're paying them, you should listen to them. You kind of have to listen to them or else you're yeah, paying you're for wasting nothing. your money. Yeah. And I've not, I, I just, I'm You've never going to the beat of your own well, drum. This Bryce Hall thing that like everyone's been talking about. I'm hoping it'll be dead by the time this episode comes out. But I'm saying like a PR team would be like, don't acknowledge it at all. And like, that's so not on brand for me. Like a PR team is always going to tell you to like, yeah, I wonder if there's like a, a little corner where there's like a little scandalous PR company that like helps you like navigate, like, and be a little messy. That's actually an insane. If thing. not, you should start. With. I was just going to say that's like a million dollar idea right there. Maybe I do that. And it just, and then just everything on top of that. Like, I feel like if I want to go to an event, I'll figure it out if I want. Like, I can just kind of figure it out. So I've never really, like, needed a PR team to do anything like yeah. that. And, like, I'm usually making articles, but just not for It is reasons. kind of more for people. Like, unless it's, like, really just, like, money you don't care to spend. It really is for people who, like, feel like they really need it. Like, because you can get, yeah. like, magazine placements and stuff. I didn't realize that. Like, I used to be like, how the fuck is she on the cover of Maxim? And it's yeah. like, oh, she yeah, pays someone right. 5K a month. To, like, do that. To do just that. Well, or, and or more, just, more. Like, But, like, if you're smaller... I feel like how much you spend depends on how big you are. Like the yeah. smaller people pay less because they can do less for you. A lot of people also pay to kind of keep themselves relevant. Like people who live a more normal life and aren't doing a lot of crazy shit. Like if you ever see an article that's like blank flaunts her tummy on her Instagram story while she drinks a green juice. Do you remember like that? Like that a lot of those type of articles that are just kind of about nothing like are ones that people pay I'm for. I'm not saying painted. every person but... You know what I mean? Do you remember that girl who was on Snapchat, Demi or whatever, who was like literally every Daily Mail article forever? I but she, like, how I, much was I she paying? heard a rumor that, and I don't know if this is true. I Wasn't don't she know like her. Sleeping with Mr. Daily Mail. I think it was something like that. I heard this rumor. I don't know who, her her last name. Me I don't neither. even know what she that, looks like. That is not. But you would just always see evidence. that. Like a lot of them are PR moments, and I've like dated people as well where I felt like they had a PR team, and I would notice more articles about like happy shit involving me dating them that like would never happen if it wasn't for like you know uh -huh. you just like see certain things I guess I don't know we should start delving into like industry secrets more I love that shit because there's so much that I understand now that I never knew about and I think is interesting but you we forget because we see it all the time now but like to yeah. like the like I feel like 
people who listen that would be interesting. sound off in the comments below or tweet us about shit that you want us to just straight up expose about the whole hollywood world and shit like that people actually have been giving because i am I, when i say like i when i'm sober i'm more wholesome i sincerely need more things to talk about because i'm not ruining my life as actively Mm -hmm. and like someone the other day was like you guys should do an episode like Nelk style where you guys like go style each other completely and then do the podcast like dr like Wait, I just want to start fun. doing shit that's fun and funny Wait, but like we should I love doesn't Nelk involve voice. a double ended dildo in my ass in Paris you know that was one time I was hesitant to talk about that I'm like boy was I right like I've been on like four podcasts since then like that's the thing is it doesn't die on canceled it's like then you go on Whitney Cummings and she wants to know about the double ended dildo in your ass and it's like oh maybe but I should just I, ran, I just ran into Whit or Whitney the other day I was I'm not kidding another synchronicity moment I'm standing on the side of the road okay I'm on the phone with Brooke Baldwin I'm explaining to her like I haven't talked to her in like two months so I was like just telling her like all this stuff mm. and I said something about Whitney and I'm not and I'm like this girl across the street is staring at me and all of a sudden this car like whips off to the side rolls the window down and it was Whitney and I was like there's no fucking where way. were you on the side of the road outside saddle ranch because like I had a friend in town. <laughs> I had a friend in town who was who had never been so me and Lila were like we'll take him and um. and he had happened to go to the wrong one so I happened to be standing outside alone and I happened to call Brooke I showed uh I was like, that, it's Whitney. And she was like, there's no fucking way. Yeah, that's so weird. I can't even imagine Whitney Cummings just driving around either. She's like, well, it made perfect. I mean, head. it's been next door to the comedy store, so it's not like that out there. Oh, yeah. She's probably doing a show. But I was or still like, shit. what? That is crazy. Yeah, all the weird synchronicities have been like driving me up a wall, but I'm just embracing them now. And I'll, I'll do an update on the episode. Do you know what I want to talk about? What do you want to talk about? So last night, I got so, so, so wildly high with Ari. And it was just me and Ari. We were chilling on the couch. We were trying to watch Adam Sandler's new movie. And we randomly get into the deepest conversation, which if you know Ari, that is like one in every three years. Yeah, it's so rare. And not that we don't have amazing conversations and he's down to get deep. It's just usually we're just giggling and like whatever. But we get into this deep ass conversation. And something that... I feel like I've been feeling since I was like 25 and I have not been doing, I've been going against the way I feel, if that makes sense, is that I do want to be more elusive. Like I feel like too many people know my business. And even again, I hate to bring it up again, but the Bryce situation really did make me reevaluate. Like who is my real friend? Who mm -hmm. am I giving this energy of friendship to and my secrets to and caring about that like cares about me like that back and like would have my back back you know what mm -hmm. I mean I love our friend group so much but there's 12 of us and a lot of us are still not in that mindset and are in the partying and the drama and the LA scene and whatever and like I feel like this is something that a lot of people in their 20s could relate to because I feel like having a group chat with all your friends is such a thing to do in your 20s mm -hmm. but like is the group chat toxic for our mindset for sure like the way but, that like everyone fights in it or like if one and person everyone does, gangs up on each other like if one person does something wrong like lila for example because it's always lila. like if lila does something wrong and then everyone is like i feel like the group chat it works because it's like no one person's not going to get through to her head she needs all of her friends to tell her like well we need the mob mentality that's why like sorry to cut you off but like mm -hmm. if i feel like she's wrong or something or if i like I'll say it in there because I know that someone will come to bat for like come back me up on it. You know what I mean? Like the other day, Amari stole a bag of chips. He did. And he posted it on his story and said, I stole a bag of chips. And he's like so drunk. And I just found it so embarrassing. Love you, Amari. I do things drunk and embarrassing all the time. Like I don't I don't mean but it like that. stealing is like wrong. And here's the thing. I always say, I say this to the masses, steal from a major corporation. If it was a 7-Eleven, do your fucking thing. I don't, it's not, steal the chips if you really want to. But also you have the money and I do also find that kind of embarrassing. So Amari, don't steal the chips. But posting about it yeah. is just so embarrassing. And it's like, I immediately sent it to the group chat and was like, because oh, I asked him to delete it. Like I was like, Amari, delete this. And he's like, no, I'm not going to delete that. I think it's funny. And like, and I, like, he's like drunk. And I'm like, I'm sending this to the group chat. So everyone hazes him into deleting it for the yeah. greater good of him and his brand and so on and so forth. But like, that's toxic. 
to like do you know what I mean yeah to make everybody gang up on him and like it's like if he can't grow up then I can't haze him group chatically <laughs> into growing up and everyone kind of learns on their own time I have an issue a little bit with like not so much with like Amari but like Ari for example I have an issue with like feeling like I not that I know everything but like I feel we're so we're older than him and i'm yeah. a, a lot older than him and so like so like in certain situations i'm like i know everything and you know nothing mm. and it's not correct but like i get so like fired up and it is probably really not good for my mental yeah i think that i'm just like i might be retiring my group chat and like falling off a little my you group chat activity you can't fall off you're already you only get it half the day because you wake up at fucking i've been six. i'm i'm a new i've turned over a new page the old tana is dead you, i'm yeah. so fucking for real you have been good i think i'm gonna keep being good like i feel i i know i'm not as wild and i know i'm not as a lot of things that i do love about myself but i think that the last 75 days that I took of sobriety, <laughs> like I was still ready to go back and have fun. But I think that I'm just, I think I'm reforming this time. No, you're just getting for older. Good. I like, I don't even know when it happened, but like, I don't go, like, I don't go out anymore. I, I, I don't go to the club. I don't go like to parties. Yeah. And I don't even remember when that stopped happening. I just stopped. I think even that, like, I'm just, I go out and I, see so many of the same people that are in their 30s and still going out every night to like chase this shit in LA and it's such an easy thing to like get caught up in you know what's crazy to me is like so I'm 26 okay and I like I had that phase obviously when I was like first got here like 22 23 or 21 mm. 22 23 where I was going to the club all the time mm. and I was with these like the same guys all the time and they were like in their 30s and I'm thinking about it now and I'm like what fucking losers like and they're still there and it's like if you're at the cl like club every day and you're like honestly if i were at the club every day i'd be like loser people say this all the time it's not some profound shit and i've heard it a million times but like a month and a half ago i saw this tiktok and this girl was like screaming into the phone and you know that's how stuff really gets through to me it's probably my childhood Just, there's something about a motherfucker screaming where i like i listen up oh my God, you know speaking of i'm like i mended my relationship with ken yurik <laughs> I need to Continue. hear about that. I don't know. Oh, because she screams. Um, screams. Someone was just essentially saying, like, you're not going to meet the type of guy you want in the club. You're not going to meet. Like, I think I'm just done surrounding myself in environments that, like, aren't aligning with my growth era. Yeah. We're, you know like, getting I mean? so sad that, like, our heart's broken by, like, a guy who posts music to SoundCloud. You know? See, that's it's hard. like It's like. That's like. A like, you're getting mood. mad at him for just being who he is. That's fair. And that's that the same fair. thing with a guy you're finding at the club and then you find out like he's a shitty guy and it's like, yeah, you found him at the club. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that's just and just club friends like gossiping. I'm just I just I really want to like I don't think you have a lot of club friends or like party friends, but just like, you know what I mean? I'll go out to a party. and I'll see a million people that I'm mutuals with that I'm friends with so many mutuals. and they're like oh my god what what's what happened with Bryce? What's the draw? I can't stop. But it's like this just happened to me today. I saw someone that I like go out with her like I'll see someone at the club and it's like, oh my God, who are you dating? And like, I'm telling them. And it's like, I just, I think I'm entering my like secretive green juice era. Yeah, like, yeah, okay. Do you know what everyone needs to try? Huh? Celery juice. Everyone has tried that. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron you haven't no. of course you haven't they don't have that and i just started drinking it every morning and <laughs> ashley would always tell me like drink celery juice like it cleans you out it helps with bloating whatever i drank a celery juice the other day and i my stomach was like speaking hebrew like i was bubbling oh, i was bubbling the house down boots houston i'm deceased i shit out everything in my literal colon like diy at like home diy colonoscopy like we have colonoscopy at home <laughs> I love celery juice. I don't. This know is the most wholesome podcast I've ever done. Um, it is really good. No, it tastes like shit. But it tastes it like does shit. The, the it gets the job done. The effects. Like I'm addicted to it. It's like, very LA. You want to know what happened to me? I what? actually already made a TikTok about it. But I was at Spring Place the other day, and I told Ari, I was like, "Will you please help? Or will you stop to get gas with me?" And I'm not kidding. This middle aged woman turned around and she goes, "You have to put gas in your car." She was dead fucking serious. I was like, "Yes." I, I do have to put gas in my car and so does 99% of America. I hate that part. And she goes, you know what she said too? She goes, "Do you care about the environment?" Bible. Uh, bitch, what, are you going to buy me a Tesla? Fuck you. That is in 
Did you respond nicely? It was so crazy because I had just had this whole beautiful day with her. Okay. She was like sitting with us. We were all like vibing. She's like a very like notable woman. She's done a lot of like notable things, but I'm like, she's like famous. Hold on. Not famous, but she's like, can you just say her name? We'll bleep it. No, I don't know her name. She, she launched. Oh, okay. But like, but I was like, that is such a crazy. How many, like there's so many teslas in la but like teslas are expensive and obviously there's electric cars that aren't teslas but just so strange like and you don't have a tesla there's stuck up people everywhere don't get me wrong but that is such an insane niche category of la is like the stuck upness like i like nice things you know what i mean but there will never not be the person in me who grew up the way i did so i'm like I, I'm just trying to think of examples like the dumbest shit just so LA like but what category of people is that because we have like LA the, assholes. like the us but it's like we grew up like less fortunate and now we are like more fortunate and it's like so we have that gauge but then also I have a lot of friends who grew up like rich as fuck who would never say shit like that I think it's an insecurity thing I think that yeah, like you think it's like people that who feel woman, like they have something to prove that woman learned that because someone else did that to her and she felt like shit do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like like, I, like tomorrow I'm going to say that to some people. Come on. <laughs> like I, I'm trying the earrings, your earrings, just like <gasps> those earrings are a Bottega dupe. Right. And I have them. I get them on Amazon. But every time I wear them, someone will ask me like, are those Bottega? And I'll be like, no, that, they're Amazon. And people will be like, Tana, that's so funny you say that At, in this same, same instance. OK, first of all, you were I don't know if you were there the other day, but there's a girl who's always in that like crowd is she the one that is so fucking insufferably annoying and never shuts the fuck up and has never been hit in her face in her entire life i wouldn't Damn. say that but if i were gonna say that i would say it about her um <laughs> she i've it, never met someone who annoys me so she's vis- going vis- on like a rant the other day and like she was like or like she was like explaining this like concept like that she had and she was like say for example you wanted like a bottega dupe and like pointed at my bag and i have like this like woven bag that is not a Bottega dupe by the way they don't have it on Bottega it's just it, it happens to be woven which is yeah. like a, a quality of a Bottega and it's bag from anthropology and it's from like anthropology it's still like 250 dollars it's not like a it's not like a cheap like DH gate bag and even if it were shut the fuck up yeah but but like to say that in front of everybody I was like okay and this has been and your then, trigger yes it is because I'm like I don't buy dupes but even if I did like it's just so weird then the same these earrings they're from anthropology also I anthropology is a night. I grew up thinking that was like the nicest store. I could never afford it. Yeah, absolutely. Same. Still, I had, um, I had them in, and she same thing. She goes, "Where are those from? Where are those from again?" And I told her, um, well, these ones are Amazon or something. I said yeah. Amazon, and she goes, Amazon. And I, I said to her, I go, "You need to get your shit together. Like, you cannot fucking say that to people. Like, it's so." And it, she was like, "I. That's not what I meant. That's not what I meant." But like, who the fuck? cares if your earrings are from amazon like what a stupid and in my thing. opinion like if someone said that to me i'm like oh my god send me the link that's such a win i'm not saying you can't have nice things but it's like like oh you liked them until you knew they were from amazon so what does that say about you yeah you're a shit person for or sure. or what you like tacky shitty fucking dupe earrings that says you <laughs> that says you don't even know wealth it is such a like, crazy crazy part of la though like that category of people like you could get like whole milk in your coffee and like that same person is gonna be like, I can't believe you drink that. Meanwhile, they're on Ozempic. Speaking of a maybe stuck up or a category of women that I don't necessarily love, right? I was gonna make a whole TikTok about this yesterday too. Like I was really thinking about this yesterday. I go to Equinox here in LA, which is a gym, but it's like 350 bucks a month. It's, and I actually want to, I want to just talk about that for two seconds really quickly. That's so insane. The only reason I personally go to Equinox is because whenever I go to like a cheaper gym that's like around Hollywood, like an LA fitness or a 24 hour or whatever, I meet a lot of people. And as much as I love to meet the people who support me, it's that's very hard to place. get a workout in. And it's just awkward and embarrassing because I'll be like dying, sweating, doing something so awkward. And then they like stop me and then I'm so embarrassed and then I take a photo I look disgusting I'm like red faced big t-shirt like sweating and like whatever and just a lot of LA gyms like that have a lot of homeless people whole nine like I do it so that it's like I can kind of avoid a little bit of that and just get my workout in yeah and you're like Sean Mendes is next to me but the reason why everyone else pays for Equinox is for that reason like celebrities go and it's like people pay to just be like yeah I go to Equinox like it's one of those you mm-hmm. know what I mean and maybe other people feel the same way as me maybe that's how like Sean Mendes talking I don't know you know mm-hmm. but it's not 
exponentially nicer. Like they, Equinox makes all these TikToks of like, come look at our beautiful space. They'll always come up on my for you. It is just a regular gym in my opinion. I personally think it's amazing. It's pretty. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I have an Equinox brand deal. They're oh. like, I love it. <laughs> There's, I've never know, been. There are certain nice amenities. Like all the products in the bathroom are keels. Like some Equinox have yeah, like Dyson. Yeah, you're supposed to rob them for their, brand, uh, their products. And yeah. And shower I, there. I do use all their products when I go in. Like it is, there are certain nice amenities, but nowhere near that I feel like they're, it's worth $300 a month. You know what I mean? But yeah. here's the thing. Because it's so niche LA, you're so cool if you go there, so on and so forth. So many of the women that go there show up like full glam and they show that like it is one of those like stuck up games again where mm -hmm. it's like, where's your workout set from? Like mine's mine's Aritzia, mine's this, mine's that, you know, and Ty was talking to me the other day. He was like, you have all these nice ass workout sets, but every single time I see you in Equinox, you are in like a big baggy T-shirt that has like a fast food chain on it and like beat up mm -hmm. Nike shoes and like your hair is falling out of your head. You know what I mean? And that's just because I've always been the type of person that like, I'm like, it's the gym. I don't care, mm -hmm. you know? And I get, oh, I can meet a cute boy or oh, whatever. Like it's, I don't know. I'm just there to do what I got to do and leave, you know? Mm -hmm. But there's something about the bitches who give me like dirty looks for that that like piss me off. To, yeah, like, you want to be like, D you, who, what the fuck are you trying to prove? I don't know why I'm so fighty right now. <laughs> so my kind. Of, I don't know. When I'm sober, I'm, I'm more like aware of things and less patient. So I'm, I'm way fightier as well. But I think that the ones that are stuck up like that have kind of made me have a disdain for all women who are at the gym, at the gym with their glam and at the gym with their. And there's probably so many nice ones, you know, but it's made me just like, fuck, fuck you and your cream blush right now, you know. Uh -huh. And I was going to make a TikTok about this yesterday. And just be like, what is the point? And I know some people are like, I feel cuter, so I work out harder. That's fine. If you're doing it with like a nice thing, you know, whatever, it's fine. But I go to the gym and there's so many Equinox locations. And there's a specific one that like everyone I know goes to. Like Jeff goes to it. Like, so I always see people I know. I always see hot people I know. I always see people I've hooked up with whatever and Ty loves this location because this one is kind of for the hot gays as well, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I'm always trying to go to a different one. But yesterday Ty was like, can we go to this one, please, whatever. And I'm like, oh, I hate that one, but I'll go. Like, I just hope I don't see anyone I know I'm looking beat. I walk in the gym. I walk up the stairs. I'm wearing absolutely like no makeup. I look disgusting. Within two minutes of walking into this gym, I see a guy I fucked. Oops fucked too not even just like oh we went on a date or like oh we're kind of friends or we fucked you well, know what i mean then he doesn't have he can't say anything about you because he texted me a few days prior weirdly and so i ended up texting him and being like i just saw you at equinox like did it i responded to what he said and he was like oh my god i thought i saw you but i didn't recognize you he didn't recognize me Maybe he didn't have his contacts. He then. did. Thank you. You are such a good friend. I love <laughs> Cotton Candy Land. I love Delulu Land. He didn't fucking recognize Why me. Why would he say that? To be fair, I look like somebody's auntie. Like I, I looked really scary for sure. But maybe I should start going to the gym and with you know brush really your hair. Bold. Wear a workout set. Well, Throw some blush on. I ha I'm. I'm I am in support of like the outfit only because it's like look good, feel good, do good. Like I used to dress up for like exams in college because yeah. it like makes you do better. And I ne I still failed every single one. But <laughs> <laughs> like that's how I feel. But I don't know. I don't think you're unrecognizable without makeup on. But you should have seen me yesterday. I'm talking like beat face red, like Stairmaster for like 45. Like yeah, I but, really. But there's something about like sweaty makeup that's so much uglier than having a actual bare face. Yeah. But I will say like I looked at myself in the mirror. Like I, I was not giving me. Well, wait. You, know? you have a six pack and then it won't matter. 100%. That's so fair. Um, But I all that shitting on the gym makeup girlies. And I think I might have to take a page from their book was my point. It's giving very Scottsdale mom like to just be like, oh, I had this math teacher in high school. Her name was Mrs. Engelman and she they would call her Ingle tits because she just had like the best boobs. And That's she would, crazy. She would like just be writing on the board in her cute little workout set every day. And she would go to the gym before and after school every day. And I, I wanted to be her so bad. It made me sick. So like I feel like I would dress up for the gym just to be just like her. Wow. We could give you like a little nickname like that. Brooks. Brooklyn Tits. 
They called her Ingle Tits. <laughs> also, she was in, she wasn't engaged, but she made her boyfriend wait wait every single year they were together. He had to add a carrot to her ring. So she like when they did get engaged, she had like literally like also her boyfriend owned the gym, so that like helped. Why did she and like all of them in the country? Is it fucked to say? Is it fucked to say like? No, she was like literally out of good, the goodness of her heart because she did not. Oh my god, she like. So she was just all around like perfect. She was amazing. Shout I out wonder Ingletits. how she's doing, Mrs. Miss Miss Ingleman, Mrs. I don't. Did you get married, Mrs. Ingleman? How are you doing now, Brooke? Yes, I appreciate you. What did I do? I don't feel like I've ever said this on the podcast. And the other night at the streamies, I was just, I had like an out of body, and I was like, I really just love doing everything with her and life with her. That is so nice. Don't tell me that because I and, don't cry. But it's just like you are so good at this and you're so funny and like touring with you. Like, I'm serious. There's no catch here. I'll cry. I just look. I just really love you (laughs) and I really appreciate you. And I think you are you deserve all of the credit you receive. And I hope you really know that. That is so nice. I really appreciate you as well. You're also a really I literally will. So like I can't I can't get a compliment like that without sobbing. (laughs) You're just a you're a really good friend. You always have my back and like this dynamic is beautiful and I never want to change it. And I hope we're podcasting until we're 80. And as we're adding more tour dates now, I want to cry. Oh, I just really appreciate you. I stop crying because it's making me if you weren't crying, I would want to cry. I agree, and I I really like this little area you're in. They're like the because I feel like you're really caring about the the caring, just yeah. caring, one hundred percent in life. Do you? I love you. Thank you for saying that. Do you? Actually, I don't. I can't remember if I've talked about this on canceled or not. But I'm obsessed with these two podcasters. They're like middle aged ladies, and their podcast is I called. Hope no one ever calls me that. Oh but no! She well, <laughs> they they like talk about it. Like yeah. they, I mean. Um, and it's called I've had it and they're like they're just like they're like us but like in like 15 years and like wait are we middle aged in 15 years I don't even know definitely we're middle aged um, now they'll be like I fucking had it with like my fucking neighbor Karen like they're just like so funny and I feel like that will you, be I us. think you've sent me them and been like this is us and I really do agree. they're so funny and like it should be like tell them what you did tell them what you did and she be like I was constipated so I used a spoon to take the shit out of my <laughs> asshole like, and that's to be real with you that's where i'm trying to get canceled at like i'm i'm new to my sobriety wholesome era so it's gonna take me a couple weeks to you know have things happen and tell stories like that but i'm excited for more of canceled to revolve around things other than sex drugs drama yeah, and we always say and like, life ruining why do we have to like we have to ruin our lives to make a good episode and like i don't think that's true i don't think anyone in the audience is like i hope her week was shitty so that we can get a good story like i think 100%. that they just I think they would like it just as much if we were talking about normal things. And I think that it's really cool. Like, shout out OG, call her daddy. Like, they would just talk about, like, dating topics and, like, yeah, but, answer, but, you know. Yeah, actually, that's the opposite of what you were going to say. Like, I would just love to, like, expand. Talk. Yeah. Grow. I think so, too. I think we can start dipping our toes in some, in some like, serious topics pretty soon here. I'm excited. I'm an intellectual. I went to college. I might know some things. Right. Like, and I also feel like guys are like, oh, my God, I'm going to end up on the podcast. Or they see our podcast, and it's like, I was swinging from four. No, what do you mean? It's I'm getting like, ghosted right now because a man was scared of the podcast. And Still I feel ghosted, like I would love, because guys always tell me, they're like, oh, I watched an episode of your podcast. Or just people I have a crush on or random shit. And imagine they, they turn on the episode, and we were fucking getting deep. Maybe it could yeah. benefit us. Maybe we could flip the script. That's why we have to have Jay Shetty on. You love Jay Shetty. We do have to have him on. Can't stop talking about him. He is like literally my idol. And Don't so- you fuck him? Sorry. He's married. I'm doing he's it married. <laughs> oh my God, he's he's best. married. He's married, but it's <laughs> so crazy because so him and his wife look so similar. Like, you know how he has like the, the, the piercing eyes? Like, yeah. They, she has them. Too. They literally look exactly the same. I love the most couples like that. Beautiful couple. I love a siblings or dating ass couple. But he is so hot. I love a couple where it's like I look like I could potentially be related to him. That's weird. Moving on. I'm going to be a country music star. I think you could do that. Texas Tanny. We talked about it on the Trisha episode for 2.2 seconds. But I'm serious, Brooke, the past week. I haven't even told you this. I haven't really told anyone because it's oh, like you've just, been practicing? No. <laughs> I oh. haven't been practicing. But I've gotten in contact with some of the best like country producers and writers. Hilarious. In the industry Wait, in can I tell you what I did this week? What would you do? I signed up for guitar lessons. <laughs> Why is that actually really funny? And imagine if, would you play my guitar? Yes. I'm so excited. Oh I'm God. serious. Remind me, keep going, but I have a story to talk. There's a lapse in the country music market for lyrics. Gap. 
Yep. Gap. <laughs> um, I guess laps works too. For lyrics that talk about things like sweetie talks about sexy red talks yeah, about. yeah there definitely is a gap in that market probably for good reason but okay Actually, no there's a country have you heard that country song that's going viral it's but it's man. it's like i'm a cunt uh, no 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 richmond the one, richmond no what's richmond. the one that's like he's like fuck him in the butt oh no yeah i don't think we're talking about the no, same thing okay about. but here's the thing though i'm just saying there's no girl country music star yeah, singing there, like, I, there has to be some tannas in arkansas you know what i mean like there have to be some like f- like feral like when we went to zach bryan the other night i looked around at the crowd and i swear to god i was like this is an untapped market for me <laughs> you and oh you know this is all about expanding so i feel like you should re- you should tap that market i'm going to try to make a country music song i'm serious and can the I, genre can I do like be... can i do like the, the brianna chicken fry laugh in the background absolutely you could even like shake a little tambourine i'm learning to play the harmonica as we speak bible i ordered a harmonica it's on my amazon storefront if anyone wants it I'm i did always... see it on your bedside table the other day i was like what's this about no i'm dead fucking ass i've been like learning to play little songs on my harmonica like when you're sober you just get bored as fuck for real let me tell you that much i'm always like why don't i make any money on my amazon storefront like n- nothing to write <laughs> because home about. nobody needs a harmonica <laughs> like put some bikinis on there take a note from alex earl bitch i know like fuck oh my gosh oh wait what oh i was gonna tell you there's this uh stevie nicks song that she wrote and it's like a, a hate song to her ex but her ex was the lead guitar player so he had to literally tour with her and she was performing that song every night like literally like about how much he sucked that's the type of and guy he had to play it every single time that's the type of guy i would fold and get back with because it's like you yeah. are so awesome that you're able to do this like oh yeah i'd be singing but it and getting so off stage iconic. like you want a blowy you know yeah. for sure that's hot. I think you could be a really good country music singer. I just think country is just an but, untapped but market. But I will say, like, Dolly Parton, like, re- she did start the whole, like, being a sex doll and also a country yeah, music maybe star. Yeah, maybe I'm, yeah. I guess I'm just trying to take it a little more ratchet. Like, Dolly's really talented. Like, a lot of, the, you know, I'm not. Like, I'm just saying, like, I'm God, trying to take so it a little amazing. more. A God, little more I, w- I wish we could... S- I would if I could spend a day with anybody, it would be Dolly Parton. I really want to do a show in Tennessee soon, just so, so that we, we have go the to Dollywood to go to Dollywood. I'm serious. I texted everyone about it. We're trying right now. I can't wait. I have a Dolly Parton fucking enormous life size Dolly Parton in my apartment. And there's just something about the Tennessee men of it all. There's something about this is a hot take, okay? But a Republican man who is maybe a little closeted and like has all the wrong values and like maybe hates himself and hates you a little fucks like no other. I feel like that was actually just every man I I slept with in college because it was like Arizona. Oh, wow. And it's very it's very red over there. I love I want this podcast to just be cuts to the next topic like all of like just like it's silence and then immediately new topic no I love because we've done that the whole way Oscar edited it like that for real seriously I'm not fucking kidding Oscar's been getting goofy with the editing have you noticed that like Rin, like sometimes I'll do side eye and it'll be like slow zoom <laughs> Do <Have> you <noticed> <laughs> that? <laughs> it's so funny my eye won't stop watering do you want to talk about the motorcycle you bought or you don't think it's funny Motorcycle? I bought a motorcycle. Fuck yeah. I don't know. I've been doing some weird shit lately. Motorcycle guitar lessons. I bought a motorcycle, but it wasn't like I just wanted to have like my dad was gonna sell his motorcycle, but he didn't want to sell it, so then I bought it so that he could keep it. But now I have an asset. <laughs> it feels like Monopoly. There's something um, that's crazy. There's something about you right now in your muscle tee talking about <laughs> buying a motorcycle and and you were saying like they don't know if I'm six three. Like I just fully like left my own body and imagined you six three with a motorcycle and like a muscle shirt on and some tattoos. I think I'd fuck you. Oh yay! Some people, <laughs> some people think I am tall. A lot of people actually, and I feel like I could have like I like that like cigarette mom energy. Like I would love to be like a cigarette mom. Would you ever go like full butch mom? Maybe if it if. I don't know. Paige the other day was like, just do, talk to me for the next like five minutes. Like you're a hey mama's lesbian. And I like really slayed it like two. I wait, honestly. Like, oh, oh, oh. Bro. My dad's best friend is a hey mama's. You met you. A hey mama's is crazy. But you met her at the canceled show. Remember? I'm trying to meet the family. You got me. <laughs> you got me because you know, that's my like if I'm going to talk to a lesbian, she's going to be a hey mama's lesbian. Like that's so my vibe. Hey mama. <laughs> I can't do it to you. <laughs> I can't do it to you. Yeah, you. But I'm so for like, like three more tries, and I feel like you could get there. Like it just natural. Like I could, I, I'm 
find myself on a daily basis refraining from like if let's like putting on basketball shorts and like grabbing my crotch like right now i just want to be like sup bitch that's so kind you know <laughs> and i can't but like maybe that's like my future maybe that's why i haven't been finding luck in my love life because i'm just i'm hey mama's coded maybe i wanted to start a segment where we start showing we play like five tiktoks on the podcast and like talk about them but I don't know if that's this episode. Maybe we like do a whole episode like that. Or maybe we just do it on our next. Or maybe we should we each have a TikTok of the week. <laughs> Let's have a TikTok of the week. Should you do a segment where you go over your uh, store page? On yeah. Amazon? That'd be funny. Ex- that's what I'm saying. Like, the, Or just the best TikToks I see for the week. Kind of like make a for you segment. Yeah. Wait, I have a couple. Do you have I one? did save this one, but it's just because I needed you to see it. It's that one like... You remember that random day in 2020 when we woke up and Trisha had done this? <laughs> and she captioned it, prob offensive. <laughs> Didn't she? <laughs> Didn't Trisha like do a one year anniversary of that the other day too? I don't remember. Like she was like, it's been a year since I did this and like dressed up like it again or something, which is so, that's such a niche funny thing to do. Like one year ago since, like, but it's just nothing. If she did, <laughs> I missed it. But just the caption, hashtag euphoric, will prop delete, prop offensive. This like feels so crazy to me that this kind of shit happened. <laughs> like that is the Wait, look <laughs> Don't say that. Don't say that she's sensitive That's my favorite thing I've ever seen like this like they had to talk about it beforehand like that's like cool like so cool it's so cool to me like and crazy (laughs) (laughs) you sent me this tiktok and i hope you guys know that a lot of the tiktoks that you tag us in that are like about canceled and shit like that we do see a lot of them we send them back and forth but i think we should start paying like a little homage yeah we should start because like that's fucking crazy that is crazy like that what? They were literally on a roller coaster. They thought of we us. Ha- now we have to go on it and talk about them. Would you we ever go? Do. You would never go on. That. I would not. I hate roller coasters literally more than anything. I'd rather. That's play not Russian even a roller coaster. That's like a death trap. Yeah, that's terrifying. Do do I keep going or no with TikTok? Oh, with TikTok? or is it like just that? That's, that's it. Like we put the Trisha one. I think. I think next week we both commit to like we have a week to find like our TikTok of the week, like like the best TikTok we saw this week and why. Like you remember in maybe in elementary school, I don't know if you had to do this, but you had to do like a current event and you'd have to choose one news story of the week that like really hit you. You know why they probably didn't do that in Vegas? Because all the news is just about like hookers dying and shit. Oh, <laughs> I'm supposed to move tomorrow and I don't have a new apartment. Like, I have to be out tomorrow. What are you going to do? Just, like, squatter on up? Yeah, I don't know. You better figure that out before we go on tour, my girl. I know that's the thing. But yeah. it's like, what can they do? Kick me out. We leave for tour, and yes, they can kick you out. I've been kicked out for that exact reason of uh, place of residence. No, they, well, they said that I was, go a, good, I was a good resident. No, she said, you're a good tenant, so you can, you can have a week. So she, really I got nice. a week, but I have to sign a lease, like, tomorrow. Yeah, we leave but for we tour go- in five days. Yeah. Six days. I'm really excited for this round of tour. By the time this is out, we'll actually be done with all of the shows. But um, I'm oh, so really? excited to be oh, yeah. wholesome and just have a wholesome little tour excursion and see what comes from it. Yay! And then I'm going to New York Fashion Week, which I'm... Ugh, I was supposed to go, but the moving of it all. I wish you would go with me. It's so fun. I want to so bad, but like poor Murph is going to be so stressed. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this wholesome sober episode of canceled we are turning over a new leaf we always say that but like we love lying we do love lying uh we'll see how it goes we're taking it day by day but i feel very wholesome i'm excited to get back out on the road i love life right now and life is good Yay. <laughs> make sure to subscribe like this video share it comment tell us things to do and talk about now that we're in our wholesome era and if you haven't gotten tickets to our tour it is linked below if any are left Yay. Next episode, I'm going to bring a tape measure and measure my head against yours. Goodbye.